Hi, everyone. This is Lauren Baker with Search Engine Journal. Welcome to today's edition of the SEJ Show, sponsored by SEMrush and Channable. With me today, I have Arnott Helmans from Amsterdam. Exactly. How's it going? It's good. It's good. Yeah. Good. It's all good. All good. Fun. Nice. Well, thanks for staying up so late to be on the yeah. show. What, what time is it there right now? Oh, no. It's about seven-ish in the afternoon, late afternoon. Oh, that's not no, too early, bad. Early evening, that's, it's fine. That's not too bad. So, um, Arna, thanks again for uh, joining today's show. Um, you know, we've we've done shows and episodes in the past on site migrations, and a lot of them have focused on the basics around mapping, 301 redirects, <laughs> things like that. Um, what excites me today is you, you really want to discuss um, the next level, right? Things that can be often overlooked that may not necessarily be SEO oriented, but help the company yep. extremely across the board. And um, in turn also do does help with SEO. So um, before we get started, how about if you introduce yourself, uh, tell the audience a little bit about your background. I've, I've known, I mean, we've communicated online and met in person once. So, um, but just to let our viewers and, and listeners know uh, who you are, um, your background, and what you bring to the table. Yeah. Um, I'm Arnold Hellemans. I've been a freelance SEO for, I think it was 20, uh, 2009 or 2010 I started. Um, basically mentored by Joost de Volk, uh, the guy yep. who set up the Joost plugin for WordPress, um, and another Dutch SEO, Peter van der Graaf. Um, and then basically started. Uh, I just have uh, had a hernia, so started fresh. And then um, I really got into it. And loads of fun. In the in the, in the beginning years, it was a lot of SEO, a lot of learning and uh, links and everything. And then I got a little bit fed up with it. Started doing more analytics, CRO. Um, and then the semantic web basically came up, and then things like CDNs and site speed. So now I'm doing a lot more of the technical SEO uh, nice. stuff. And the majority of my clients are US and UK based. So mm -hmm. I don't often work in the Netherlands anymore. Um, yeah, I, I like working on bigger projects. And um, unfortunately, we're a tiny country <laughs> with a tiny <laughs> yeah. audience. So uh, yeah. But the Dutch, you Dutch have a very close knit SEO community, right? So you said you're mentored by Yoast. Yeah. Um, I know Dennis. Um, I'm not going to try to mispronounce his last uh, name. Uh, this is a funny Goed story. Yeah. Okay, he go he got me on stage during uh, SMX West because he thought there was no Dutchie in the room. There were a thousand <laughs> people. And then he said, anybody can pronounce my last name while buying beers for the night. And I said, Dennis Goedersbeerde. <laughs> and he went like, Ah, wow. Okay. <laughs> so he bought me beers for the night and he's a, he's a good friend. So we often nice. uh, hang out. So yeah, definitely. Nice. Very cool. Very cool. So um, let's talk about site migrations. Um, you know, besides, besides the, the, the basics, um, let's take the pre-existing site A and make sure mm -hmm. it, it, if you can't maintain the URL structure that you had previously, or even the same XML sitemap <laughs> URL yeah. and things like that, um, redirecting from A to B usually is what most people talk about, right? Yeah. Um, and sometimes, you know, A to B and then A to C or whatever to make sure you get that historic value. Yeah. But what are what are some of the, <clears throat> um, I would say overlooked or, you know, important components of a site migration that that have come into your practice that have made a big difference on the client side um, or on the business side um, when, when, when performing that platform change? Yeah, I, I think one of the main things is that the company doesn't know something changes. Mm. So it's your task to propaganda that to loads of people and get everybody on board. So for instance, if somebody is running um, an affiliate program and mm -hmm. uh, they don't update the links, they don't reach out to the affiliates, it now goes through a 301 uh, or God forbid a 302 um, 
and then it basically uh, gets stripped of the parameter, and now it's not tracking anymore. Um, so at some point you'll you'll get angry uh, affiliates, or um, or they reach out to you. You reach out to them and saying, "Why are you not on the affiliate program?" And they said, "Well, we are, but you're not tracking it anymore." Those kind of things. I think it happens broader. Um, I see a lot of people that don't talk to their uh, um, the performance marketing channels, uh, things mm -hmm. like uh, Meta ads, uh, Google ads, Bing ads, Microsoft ads, I should say. Um, and basically, all the tracking parameters are now being stripped, and now it becomes organic traffic because there is still a refer, in this case, Google, but it's not attributed to the right click anymore. So those are some of the examples. I, I can go on and on because um, it, I think it's, at least in my case, it's, it's also my task because I know the previous structure, the new structure. I do all the research so I can see what's happening and, and what I need to redirect. Um, so taking that into account can, well, you can save so much money to the business by doing the, this the right way. So yeah, I think that's a big one. But also in, in terms of tracking, I don't see a lot of people that uh, basically that do advanced tracking that they start updating the events they track because sometimes it changes on the new website and all of these kind of things. Um, yeah, I mean, some of, some of the examples that where you need to inform and get other people on board and not just SEOs and devs, right? What are, what are some of the um, <clears throat> tools or techniques that you utilize uh, to, find, to find those overlooked, whether it's um, legacy versions of the site or um, on, the, on the affiliate I, I, tracking site? Uh, of course, this is another one, right? Um, and I think uh, it has been discussed loads of times. Uh, you want to get as many backlinks in into a bucket so that you know which pages have links. So you use all the tools, all the webmaster tools and different backlink tools. Um, if there are a lot of affiliate links in there, you already know that there's an affiliate program or there used to be an affiliate program. And then you can start looking at all of those. Um, I think another big one is uh, the Wayback Machine. Um, and in the Wayback Machine, I mean, I built my own script to do it. But basically, you can request all the URLs from, say, the first day and time the website went live. And then you basically can track all the hops it goes through. And you see so many sites where these previous URLs go to four or five different ops because that basically means they've switched CMSs three times and did a redesign or a reshuffle of URLs. And it's up to you to make every one of them single hop. And in that process, you'll find loads, loads of clues that there's affiliate programs or other tracking. So um, would you mind walking through an example of uh, maybe some of the uh, old URL structures, subdomains, um, <laughs> um, uh, landing pages, things like that, 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 that you'll find via something like the Wayback Machine and how you make sure that's implemented from a change perspective? Um, yeah, so, so, so the cool thing about the Wayback Machine um, is that you can see URL structure, but you can also see what was on the actual web page. Because yes. back in the days, we used to have one, three, three, four, five, six, seven dot ASPX or dot net or whatever. Right. Um, but you can actually see what used to be on the page, which helps you to actually redirect it into the right direction, right? Because I don't see a real, uh, I don't like just putting everything I don't know onto the homepage for the simple reason that I'm just wasting Google's resources, but also giving signals like, I don't know what they can do, but just throw it there. So I, yeah. I like to be more meticulous in, in that respect. So an example of when I did this is, is like, you can, 
I was doing this for a larger company and I found that some of the redirects, they hit like one, two, three, four, five redirects and then a 404. It's like, yeah. like that is not good, right? Um, so how you can do this is basically you get, uh, you take, there are scripts out there that will uh, get you all the um, uh, pages from uh, um, the Google uh, or no the, um, or the Wayback Machine straight into Google Sheets, and then you can use functions in uh, Google Sheets that will do all the redirect hopping, or you can use uh, crawlers like Screaming Frog or or others where you can supply a list and then it will look look them up. Um, uh, you'll be amazed by all of that. And 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 by just doing this, it, it also really helps you. If, if you're a consultant at a company, most people at the company won't even know they've had four versions of the website. Yes. Right? Yeah. Oh, we used to have an HTML website. Oh, we used to be on big commerce. Oh, we used to, be, we had a blog on this subdomain at but one yeah, time. But, yeah. But, but, but even, I mean, I've been in a migration where it was for a local florist, right? And uh, and the guy basically dropped in rankings and he thought he'd done everything correctly. But the one thing he forgot was that he was on the BBC News in the, uh, and in a lot of newspapers with an article about a, sna a, a poisonous frog they found uh, amongst lilies, right? And okay. that article basically had all the backlinks. But he said, yes. it's so out of date, I'll just remove it. And he literally plummeted. And we just resurrected that content. He went yes. to the Wayback Machine, got all the content, put it on his new blog, put all the redirects in, and he jumped straight back up. Yes, that's that's awesome. That's awesome. I've, also had, things, right? I, I've also had scenarios where like um, years back, maybe the blog existed on a blogspot domain, right? So they, they copied all of the old blog posts, put it on the site, but then forgot to turn off the old, the old, um, the blog spot thing. Yeah. So then yeah. you have something that's, that's Google hosted, right? That's out there from a content perspective. That's actually either outranking their own site and the calls to action are out of date and everything else. Or of course, you know, when you have that duplicated content, um, you're not, you're not going to rank as well as you could be. So sometimes it's just a question of turning it off and, or, or I mean, turning it off and redirecting it, but no, you don't want to have, you don't want to have a legacy, a uh, legacy content that, that's hosted on Google or hosted on wordpress.com yeah. somewhere. Yeah. Right. And then, and then have that try to um, outrank that content on your own site. Okay. It's the same things. What I've seen when you uh, get into the discussion about subdomains versus main domains. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and, um, and, and but what I've found is that um, there is no ultimate solution. But if the subdomain has a lot of backlinks, so if you yeah. publish all your news there, there's a lot of backlinks, um, it is definitely worth moving it into the main domain because yes. it will count towards that. Um, if it doesn't have any backlinks, why bother moving it with a reverse proxy? But it's all these kind of things you start learning when you start doing these kind of things. You see uh, these kind of things happen. But I think I think the main thing here is you need to do proper research, but also take it to a broader perspective, right? Because I see a lot of things. Uh, even um, we're going to change the naming of pages or the navigation because it's not our tone of voice. You need to make it compelling, like even if you're not going to change the content, means you're changing all the internal linking. Um, and as an SEO, you should be involved because yep. you need to show like it's not only about the brand, but there is also a drawback in, in SEO. And I think we need to, as SEOs, we need to explain that. We need to make a business case for ourselves. And the best way to do it is get everybody on board on all the stuff yep. that we're saving. Right. So how many site migrations do you get brought into during the planning phase versus the, oh, we just did this and everything dropped phase? <laughs> I think back in the days, it was about 100 percent the latter. OK, <laughs> uh, but I think it's changing now because uh, I'm talking to people and I'm talking and I might have helped them at some point. 
Mm-hmm. But people tend to move again for whatever yeah. reason, but they do redesign or whatever. So shiny object I, syndrome. Everyone's moving to Webflow now, right? Everyone's doing this. Everyone's doing that. Like yeah, with the multilingual site move to Webflow. Yes. Mm-hmm. Good Go luck. For it. <laughs> but but the thing is, um, when you start uh, seeing these kind of things, once you've helped them at some point, they return to you because they know how important it is. So I think mm-hmm. at the moment, I'm more like 50-50. Um, and I, to the ones that I need to rescue, I really want to make sure that they want to put the effort in. Because yes. I feel like loads of them just say, hey, Arnold, come and fix this. And then... I'm just mapping your else. Not going to happen. It, you need to put the work in yourself because you need to understand what's happening. So, yeah, I prefer being um, involved at an earlier stage. And it's not just about maintaining the rankings, right? It, it's about finding those those gems. There's a uh, there's, there's a real, reality TV show here in the U.S. called Storage Wars, where people uh, basically bid to. Um, get the know, belongings within a storage unit, right? And, yeah. and then sometimes what happens is they don't get anything. But sometimes they'll find something that's, they'll bid like $100, $500 on a unit, and they'll find a $10,000 like uh, collectible or something along those lines, right? So that happens quite often in migrations as well, is that yeah. to your point with with the poison frog story, yeah, it's like, yeah, oh, yeah. why did you do, oh, what happened? Oh, did you know about this? And then when, when you're at a larger company, to your, to your point earlier, People just don't know. They've been there for a year. We had so much turnover in 2020 at different companies. And, and then the ability to come in and be the, the archaeologist or the historian yeah. on the website, right? Like the Indiana yeah. Jones of SEO, just like going through and, and, and finding all of these, all these, of these yeah, artifacts. Yeah, yeah exactly. Exactly. Um, yeah, and now I, I, I think we, we, we I think more people should know about the the Wayback Machine, right? Because it just gives you so many clues on what you're starting off with. Um, yes. That that's a, a massive thing. Um and I and then I think that the the, the the a big bugbear of me lately has been, yeah, let's go headless. And then they built oh a whole business case about the headless, but they don't understand the implications of, I mean, it gives you a lot of freedom, but it takes away a lot of the basics. You don't have sitemaps, you don't have hreflang, the pages are not connected. It just, it's, yes, it can be done. And yes, there are business cases, but if you do anything with um, not templated content, then don't go headless. That would be my, my advice. But then again, you get called in and then the dev says, ah, by the way, we, we are using this and we're going headless. And you go, really? Because maybe we shouldn't, but we know all of this, right? So yeah. sometimes you have to deal with what you have to deal with. But sometimes the, uh, the, sometimes sometimes headless also means you're cutting it off at the head. So you've gone bodiless <laughs> Just as I, well. I mean, it, it all depends on the quality of the devs and their understanding of what they're building mm-hmm. um, and, and, the, and, and also a proper business case. But in the majority of companies, it doesn't exist. So there's the Wayback Machine for finding yeah. the historic URLs. Also, yeah. Google Search Console does a pretty good job uh, on the, w- with their 404 and page reporting of identifying older URLs as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you had this, before we started the show, uh, you had brought up log files a, yeah. a bit. So could you yeah. get into the importance of log files for identifying and then also any any workarounds on that end? Yeah, I, I think uh, log files are tremendously important. Um, if you can get to the log files and you can filter out the genuine bot requests of, of Microsoft bot and uh, so Bing bot and, and Google bot, it will... It, you will see that they request pages and you go, why are they requesting these pages? Because none mm-hmm. of my backlink tools gives me any information on these. But then you have to remember that how is a company that provides backlink data um, as good as a machine, as, as basically an ecosystem, Google and Bing, that have like, 
10, 100 times more crawling capabilities. So you're always looking at a subset of backlinks, a subset of, of, yeah. of things. Um, and I think log files, especially during and just before core updates, gives a massive clue. And people don't know mm -hmm. this, but just before core updates, you see a massive spike in crawl requests uh, on a lot of pages that are 404. Um, now, what my view on this is, is that Google is refreshing their algorithm, their page rank as a baseline for their new rankings. Um, so they want to recrawl all the old pages and see if they 404, because 404 means try again sometime later because I've made an error. So these kind of things are easy to find in log files. Now I can already see listeners go, yeah, but I never get my hands on log files. It's like the holy yeah, grail, exactly. but you never get them, right? What percentage? Um, what percentage of your clients give will hand over the log files to you? Um, corporate, hardly mm -hmm. any, right? Yeah. Uh, it's probably currently one or two. Um, in SME, um, what I tend to do is get them onto a CDN okay. for speed improvements, uh, things like Cloudflare, um, yeah. Fastly, um, and those kind of things. And now what you can do, uh, and for, in, in my case, it's mostly Cloudflare, but what you can do in Cloudflare is you can, you can either get a third-party uh, plugin like Logflare, which is just one click, and then all of your log files end up in a BigQuery table you can query with uh, uh, Looker or Data Studio. Um, or you can, you can already see a lot of it in the seven-day analytics in the dashboard of Cloudflare. Um, now, if you say, I don't need a CDN, I 100% disagree with that. Everybody should use mm -hmm. a CDN. And I think the free version of Cloudflare already gives you. So if you do SEO, just get, get your site on Cloudflare and just go into the analytics uh, thing or network. I think it's network. And you can see all the requests and you can filter out, give me all the Googlebot requests that for our 404 -ing. It's a very easy and simple fix, and it doesn't cost any money for the free version. But even the paid ones are relatively cheap. So yeah, I'm looking at the Logflare price uh, page right now. Um, for zero dollars per month, you get 12 million events, and uh, it looks like up to three days of, of retention of those events. Um, and then for their uh, I guess their metered version, it's only $15 per month, right? So that's a, that's a yeah. huge, that's a huge savings um, compared it's, to it's, the ability to not have that information and not utilize that information. And the only thing you need to do is do a name change, uh, a name server change to run it through Cloudflare. Um, and then you have log files and then you can find loads of stuff. Um, I mean, was working for a client in the CBD niche, right? And we saw a lot of Tor traffic being blocked, stuff you can mm -hmm. find in Cloudflare. And you can make them because people were basically protecting and surfing through Tor. So you can do all of these kind of things. And it's, you just need to be creative. And I think that is what most SEOs are. We're creative people because there are no rules in our game. <laughs> no, there's not. No, there's not. No, it's fun. Right? Especially, especially people that's, that started uh, that that started back before days, twenty. Right? Yeah, back <laughs> in the day. Yeah, there were no rules. We were just making shit up as we went along. Exactly, and it was. Oh, let's see fun. if this works. It worked. Okay. Oh, hey, this it didn't works. Work. Yeah, let's do some more. Yeah. Um, but I think, uh, and whilst you're at it, I've seen a lot of companies where it was difficult to get redirects implemented. Right. Mm -hmm. We've all been there. Yeah. So if you're or the using... correct redirect, right? Because yeah. the 302, 307s come up quite a bit for some reason now. And I'm like, really? Yeah, but, it, but th those are harder to fix. But say they, uh, the devs quote a lead time to put in redirects, right? If you run it on the CDN, you can do the redirects on the edge mm -hmm. instantaneously. Yeah. So I think there's a lot of benefits to this. 
must admit that the hard part of doing this is when you then move away, nobody knows where the, re the redirects are coming from. And I've been there, right? That stuff changes without you understanding why. But I think that's a way to get uh, easier ac access to log files. And I like Logflare, um, but you can you can build your own one as well, right? It's fairly easy to just push the use build a script that just pushes it into a BigQuery table, and then you basically have it for even cheaper. Nice, very cool, very cool. Um, so you talked a little bit about uh, affiliate um, tracking IDs. Uh, things like that that come up. I, I've been working on a migration. We've been doing outreach uh, uh, to basically change and update links on third parties, right? Mm -hmm. And then some of those some of those responses are, well, um, we had an affiliate link before. It doesn't seem to be working anymore. Um, what happened? Uh, what other types of issues or things that people can pre-plan for um, have you run into as a result of, of a... I guess, unplanned site migration or a site migration where not everyone was brought to the table? Oh, um, I, I think we already just discussed affiliate links. Um, it's for the rest, it's mostly tracking parameters. Um, but I've also seen where, um, uh, what was that? I think it was an external locator that was uh, basically products were being synced through a third-party tool. Um, mm -hmm. And that third-party tool was powered in a different way than through the CMS. So all of the shopping feeds were, were powered from, like, this is the URL structure for all my products. Oh, okay. But it wasn't. Yeah. Um, so basically, it was using, I think it was a PIM system that was powering the, uh, the feed because it, everything used to just be domain name slash product slash uh, and then a number. Uh, so basically what they built was, hey, we've got that the URL identifier. We can build the feed using this. But then they changed the CMS and that changed yeah. the URL structure into categories and then everything broke. So their shopping feeds were their affiliate, like all of it. Um, and as you said, right, we're like Indiana Jones. We go in, we find these this stuff. I'm not saying that this often happens, but I've it seen, yeah, it can, right? So it's just keeping your eyes open. And, and for this, um, it's getting your hands on log files really helps. What I also like about this approach is that, you know, from uh, it was Todd, Todd Friesen posted something the other day. He, He's, he's on the job market and he posted yeah. this on LinkedIn or something. He's like, you know, what he's seen from the interviews is that people are just looking for a basic SEO, things like that. And what they don't get is that, um, yeah. to paraphrase, SEOs are the Swiss army knife of the internet, right? We can go through and find almost anything and do almost anything and bring it up. And, and to your point, you know, you've discussed that what you've been able to find uh, via taking the time to do the research to dig in. Um, you've been able to help uh, the affiliate team. You've been able to help the ads team. You've been able to help the shopping feed team, right? And the, you know the way Google's going, like half of the results right now are shopping feeds. So um, in essence, this makes, this makes you as the consultant, it positions you as being more than just the the SEO guy or the SEO person, um, but more so uh, more value to the company as a whole, right? Which can really uh, build respect and trust amongst those that client base. And when they go somewhere else or they move around again, hey, we, we have a rebrand coming up. We have a site migration coming up. Exactly. What do we exactly. do? And I think... On that point, right, um, what I miss in a lot of SEOs is that they really want to learn about what drives the business. How do they make money, right? Uh, because it's not just about rankings. And so if you lose rankings on uh, on content that wasn't helping uh, the sales, but you've gained rankings on where you should gain rankings, aka the money pages, um, 
that changes the business model. So I think uh, I, as SEOs, you need to really start to dig into analytic systems and know how to build business cases for different yeah. things. If you get involved earlier, you can make a compelling ar uh, argument not to change the URL structure, because if you do, we will see a drop on this, which leads to 2 million in revenue loss in, in say the first month. Yeah. So that makes a way better compelling thing than saying, I will lose traffic. Yeah, but everybody does with the migration. No, we don't need to if we just keep it the way it is, right? And there's also, like, I think in SEO, we discuss unbranded quite a bit, but there's also a branded aspect. Like, perhaps the site used to have a reviews page that had customer testimonials that was taken away. Now, when someone searches for the brand reviews or is this brand trusted or whatever it may be, um, that's gone and they're going to third parties or competitors, uh, com competitor comparison pages, where they're taken off track when they initially started looking for the brand. And then they're introduced to the comp their, their competitor set because that's not there anymore. I've seen that happen yeah, quite and, a bit on the migration side as well. And, and there's other things, right? There's other things where um, when you when you change something, they don't update the Google My Business. It's another one yeah. where like there it's all over the place, right? Or when they when they do when they change logos, for instance, right? You want to if, if you like. Often a rebrand is also new colors, new logo, but then the rest of the internet is still full of the old one. So who's going to clean that up? Right? Are you going to trust the company that has three different logos floating around? So there's yeah. all these kind of things that um, you can take this further and further. Um, I was just thinking about something else I found was that a company had proper structure data with area served and loads of other things. Then they removed this from their location pages. Um, yeah. they, they, they kept the URLs the same, but they, they lost a lot of traffic, right? Um, again, I think it's something an SEO should do. So to also look at the search of data, is the search of data still available on every page? It, yeah. It's stuff people don't think about, but it has quite an impact. And there's, not just the, and there's not just the Google My Business and the local citation component of it, but there's also, I, I was working on a project once where um, brick and mortar and they, they moved their location down the street. The problem was, is that um, when someone searched for that location, Google images showed the old location and then also city guides and other articles talked about that location and showed the old location and the address. And they, they had a problem. The, their problem wasn't search necessarily or, yeah. or that first aspect of search and click. It was more so um, a loss in foot traffic, a loss yeah. in people walking into the business, uh, which, is, which is pretty incredible. So in, in that case, we had to, you know, again, outreach to all the different sites that had the well, image of their go. old location and everything else. There you go. And I, I don't think a lot of people know how to Google. That's the other part. I think Google made it harder for us to find these kind of things. We can still do it. Back in the days, you could use search operators and, and, and all of kind of things. But Google has basically uh, changed that a little. But, but I fully agree. And and it, it's, it, it's, it's everywhere. And... Um, yeah, I think we need to have a more holistic approach to migrations than just saying, here's your redirects. Um, we've talked a bit about getting in before the migration. Yeah. Um, how long uh, do you think a, how long do you think the migration itself should be planned? Um, and do you typically have a checklist or something like that that you're working off of to review everything beforehand? Yeah, yeah, I do. I created my own checklist, um, but um, um, the answer is a typical SEO question, right? It depends, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, and we all know this. Um, but say for a large corporation, like a large bank or uh, as such, um, in the Netherlands, we have a bank that has gone through uh, a merger. Uh, had, there were websites before that. They've gone through 
two different CMSs, three different CMSs. Um, in that case, planning it, um, I, I'm almost going two months because you need to talk to all the stakeholders, get all the information, get them all on board. And ideally, this is pre, uh, how do you call it, navigational structure. So this is like real pre-work. Um, and then there's a bit of building building going on where you're involved in, uh, do we set the, the semantics of the site correctly, the headers and everything. And then you have the part that goes into the migration. So there is, I would say three to four months, but not in, in a straight go, but in different parts of the process. Mm -hmm. um, nice. However, if it's a small site, um, yeah. like, yeah. I, I mean, you, you can probably do it in a few hours because it's not that hard. Excellent, excellent. Um, it's been a real pleasure connecting with you today, Arnott, and everything else. Um, where can uh, where can our, our viewers and listeners find you online? Well, on X, we now call it X, right? On Twitter, <laughs> yeah, guess, it's yeah. uh, at Hellman's. Um, you'll see a mayonnaise logo. That's just me having a bit of fun. Um, uh, otherwise, connect with me on LinkedIn, just Arnold Hellemans. Um, I think I'm the only one in there, uh, hopefully. Um, and uh, when you Google me, um, yeah, you should be able to find me. Um, so, yeah, and feel free to connect. Uh, just let, let me know where you found me. If you listen to the show, more than happy to connect. Got you, got you. And <laughs> are you still doing any speaking or anything like along those lines at the moment? Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm speaking in Stockholm next month and in, what is it, March, 21st of March at, uh, in Amsterdam. So Stockholm is Conversion Jam, speaking together with Jono Alderson. Um, mm -hmm. And then again with Jono in Amsterdam on the, at Friends of Search. So those are the, the two um, that I'll be speaking at now. Um, but I'm trying, I did a lot of speaking last year and I'm, I'm just a bit like, okay, the family needs some time as well. Very true, very true. Well, it's been a pleasure. And I'd like to also thank uh, Channable and SEMrush for making today's show possible. Um, Arna, it's been great. I've learned a lot yep. about migrations. I got some things rolling in my head right now, not just about migrations, but just like current projects I'm working on, just the ability to to just dive into those log files and see see what's happening and, and, and see what we can identify to be able to quote you, resurrect, uh, yeah. resurrect some of those gems that may have existed in the past. So even if you're not going through a migration, I, I would still say yes. take some of Arnold's tips and go through and see what you can find um, with current sites that you're working on, because most sites have been changed over time, and that may great. There may have been a migration five years ago that uh, cut something off that you can reattach yeah. and then grow. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Well, it's been a thank pleasure. Um, thanks so much, well, thank, and uh, we'll talk to you soon. Love Absolutely. It. Absolutely. Have a good day. Okay. Thank you for joining us this week on the Search Engine Journal Show. If you liked this episode, subscribe to our channel for so much more and click the notification bell so you don't miss a thing.